In this video, I'm sharing a very easy method to create money holder greeting cards. You won't need any specialty dies or supplies for this type of card. And you should be able to create a card design like this using most of your stamps and coordinating dies. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and I'm hoping you love this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell too to be notified of every new upload. Let's start by stamping some images in black Copic marker friendly ink on white paper. The size of the images you pick is the only thing that matters as you'll want to use something that's big enough to hide a folded bill behind it. So a small critter stamp, for example, is not going to work, but a cute giraffe, like the one that I'm using here, and also that gorgeous floral arrangement will. Both of these images are from Pretty Pink Posh and come from the Animal Signs and Mother's Day stamp sets, respectively. Next, I'm going to do some coloring, quick coloring using Copic markers. Nothing fancy, just some quick strokes of color to bring these images to life. If you're more comfortable using other coloring mediums, I encourage you to use whatever you are more accustomed to. Here I'm using YG03, YG17, RV34, RV11, RV10, Y11, Y35, Y17, BV11, BV0, and BV000 markers. To color the giraffe, I'm using E37, E33, E31, R20, and E51. I'm not coloring the middle frame part of the giraffe as I actually plan to combine these two images and have my critter holding a floral bouquet and not the frame. So no need to do any coloring there. So here's how I want to combine these. You can see that the frame remains visible in this case. So I need to trim it down so that only the giraffe shows from behind these flowers. I'm also going to cut the front legs off and cut the tail off. I will later reattach these parts onto the image, but in slightly different places. There, our giraffe now looks like he's holding these flowers. I'm also going to make a small cut into the flowers themselves to have his face be inserted in a little bit. It just looks a little better this way, I think. I'm using foam adhesive squares to foam bound the flowers onto my critter, just to pop them up a little bit. I also cut out the front legs and foam mounted those as well so that they look as if he is holding the bouquet. Super cute. And it wasn't too hard to do at all. I just need to attach the tail and the critter will be ready to go on the front of our card. Next, I've done some partial die cutting using a coordinating die. To make the partial cut, I only covered the part of the die that I wanted to cut into the paper and left the other part of the die free. This allowed me to do partial die cutting and only die cut the top part of my giraffe, just like so. Now I will place the colored giraffe over the partial die cut to complete the card. Now before I do that, I also want to add some dry embossing to the background. I'm using a new stencil from Pretty Pink Posh. This is a white stripes stencil. And I'm using the embossing sandwich in my die cutting machine to emboss this design onto my panel. To do that, I have my base platform, my embossing mat, the paper, the stencil, and next the embossing plate. This is embossing sandwich for my die cutting machine, which is Spellbinder's Deep Sea Die Cutter. The sandwich will be the same for Spellbinder's Platinum machines. If you have a different die cutting machine, please check your machine manual for proper sandwich instructions to dry emboss with the help of dies. These sandwiches are different for every machine, so make sure you follow the instructions for the machine that you own. I've dry embossed this panel and I love the result. It looks very clean and simple, yet there's pretty linear texture in the background. I trimmed this panel down to be 4 by 5 and a quarter inches and I also made a card base. It's an A2 card using hot pink cardstock. I used same color cardstock to heat emboss a small sentiment for this card. It reads, you are amazing. The sentiment comes from the same animal signs stamp set. That's where that cute giraffe is from. I white heat embossed the sentiment and next trimmed it into a cute little banner. Now I want to turn this banner into a little pick to add to the bouquet. To do this, I'm adding a stick. 
I wanted to use the toothpick for this, but I couldn't find any toothpicks at home. So I'll let you in on a little secret. I used spaghetti. Yep, there I said it. It's a piece of non-cooked spaghetti, but no one will ever know. Well, no one but you. Finally, we are getting to the most interesting part of this video, the money holder concept. Here I have a $10 bill and I'm going to fold it and insert it into the panel through the partial die cut. See why we made that partial cut? So that we can insert the money or a little note perhaps with a message onto the card. While I have the bill inserted, I'm going to add foam adhesive around it and make sure it's not touching it. I want to block the bottom part of the panel so that I don't have stuff falling down into the card and making it impossible to get it out. I'm also using my anti-static powder tool to eliminate any of the residual stickiness on the foam tape so that nothing is going to stick to it. Now we can adhere this panel onto the card base. You can actually opt to use regular adhesive, not necessarily foam, if you'd like to keep your card flatter, but I wanted to make sure that there was enough room behind that partial die cut to insert a folded bill. Next, I used foam adhesive and foam mounted my handsome giraffe onto the card, along with that your amazing sentiment pick already foam mounted in place. I stamped a few pink stars, to coordinate with the rest of the pink on the card, and I also adhered several white jewels scattering around the project. I can easily remove the folded bill or tuck it back in, and my card is ready to be gifted. I also made one more card to share. This one is for the graduation, and it uses the same concept and pretty much the same supplies. I'm not going to go into details as to how to make it, as it is identical to the previous card, but I will quickly walk you through the process. I wanted to create an embossed background for this card as well, so I dry embossed the graduation stencil, also from Pretty Pink Posh, on white cardstock. I've also made the partial cut by using the coordinating elephant die from the Animal Science stamp and die set. This time, though, to make the design pop, I decided to add some color to it and help highlight all of the raised areas. I've been wanting to try a new product, a new to me product, the Palette Pastels from Jane Davenport by Spellbinders. This is in color chilled and also one of her blender sponges. I know this looks like makeup and you're probably wondering what on earth am I going to do? While this does look like makeup, it was designed to work as a coloring medium and it works beautifully on paper. It can also be used as makeup if you want, it's skin safe. Anyhow, I have loaded the sponge with a light blue pastel and here I'm lightly blending it on the paper. This is giving me a very soft look, there aren't any harsh lines here, the product is dry, there's no moisture there so there, so there cannot be any harsh lines like we sometimes have with the inks and ink blending tools. This is definitely a new territory and a fun product to color with, and I look forward to playing with it some more in the future. Here's actually another background that I dry embossed and blended with these pastels, just with a darker color. Next, I stamped, colored, and cut out an adorable elephant from that same Animal Signs stamp set. I used W5, W3, W1, and R20 markers. I also stamped a graduation cap and a scrawl from the Congrats Grad stamp set and colored those images using Copic markers as well. I used RV34, RV11, RV10 colors along with a C9, C7, and C5 markers. I foam mounted this darling baby elephant onto the background, matching him with a partial die cut already made. Next, I added his graduation cap and scroll using foam adhesive. I foam mounted the entire panel onto light pink card base and also embellished it with a few stamped and die cut stars and pretty white jewels. While the slits in these cards are relatively small, you should be able to tuck any folded currency bill inside or tuck a little handwritten note if you like. I hope you'll give this idea a try using these or other stamps from your stash. If you do, remember to share online and tag us on social media we always love seeing what you guys are making. On the screen, there is a link to a playlist with all of my videos featuring Pretty Pink Posh stamps. Subscribe now not to miss any new card making videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.